application. I'm not changing <coughs> the original, I'm just making two new copies of it. It turns out that's not the way in which cells replicate things. Instead, they replicate by copying each strand so that when the two new duplexes are found, each has one strand of the original. That is called semi-conservative replication. Okay. If we replicate again, what we see of the original two strands is one of the original strands is here, one of the other of the original strands is here, and now we've got something that's got neither of the original strands in it. Okay. But each time we're doing it, we're taking one strand from this and one strand, one, the red and one blue, one red, so this new blue is a new blue, one of these blues is a new one over here. That means that DNA replication occurs by each strand being copied independently. Each strand is copied independently. And that is an interesting phenomenon. If we look in um, most systems, what we discover is that replication occurs what's called bidirectionally. Bidirectionally means two directions at once. All right, well, what does that mean? Replication always starts at a given place on a given DNA. It's a specific sequence, and that sequence has a name. It's called an origin. An origin is a place on a DNA where replication starts. It has a specific sequence. And when replication starts at that point, it proceeds, in this case, outwards in both directions. That's the bidirectional part. So you can see this guy here that's replicating, part of it has gone to the right, the other part has gone to the left, and eventually they're going to meet over here. And when they meet down at the bottom, they're going to have a, a brand new completed duplex. This is a circular DNA, and it's a circular DNA like we might find in bacteria. Bacterial have, bacteria have circular DNAs. We have linear DNAs, and they're different, and I'll say more about those later. Bacteria have circular DNAs. Here um, is more of what our DNA replication might look like here. And we can see that in ours, we have multiple places within a chromosome where replication might start. In bacteria, they only have one place where replication starts. Yes, sir? Uh, did you say that origins of replication all had similar sequences? Um, no. I said for a given system, they'll have identical sequences. But if I were to look at for an origin of replication in, say, a human cell versus that of a virus, they would have usually very different sequences. But that all of that virus would all have the same one. But, oh, okay. All right. So each um, one virus, each of the origins of replication would be the same? Would be the same. Yep. Yes? That's a really good question. It turns out the DNA is pretty darn chemically stable. Pretty darn chemically stable. And when it's not chemically stable, that is, let's say your, your, your cells suffer DNA damage. I'll talk a little bit about this later. You go out in the sun, you will damage your DNA. It's one of the reasons I'm not a fan of, of tanning booths, okay? Because you damage it. You have enzymes that repair damage readily. But if the question is, if you were to take a DNA and let it just sit in a tube, or let it sit in a cell, how long would it remain stable as it is? Okay, the answer is you can easily have a DNA molecule be stable for thousands of years. So it's entirely possible, and this happens to this day, where we have uh, uh, um, archaeologists that may be working on, say, a, a site where they have found human, they have found ancient humans, and if they're very careful and they don't contaminate it, they can in some cases find a single human hair untouched over the eons, and they can get DNA off of that human hair and amplify it and see what the nationality was of the person who owned that hair. It's remarkable. It's absolutely remarkable. 
Exactly how long a DNA is stable is, is a little bit open to argument, but at least for thousands of years. There are some people who think you can go for millions of years. That may be stretching it. It probably depends on the environment in which it's located. Pretty cool, huh? So Jurassic Park, right, where they, they get the insect, right, and they pull the DNA out of there. Probably not, not, not feasible, but who can say? Yes? Uh, there is, actually. That happens in our cells, and I'll, I'll say more about that later, but you're exactly right. I, our DNA is shrinking over time. My DNA is shorter than your DNA is. That's not bragging rights, either. Another question? Yeah? Um, just the, the previous diagram that you said was attacked with uh, a radioactive isotope nitrogen. Was that was how the experiment was, was done. It, it wasn't radioactive, though. It was a non-radioactive isotope. Okay. Yeah. But you don't need to know that. Uh, that. If you're curious, I'll be happy to tell you how that, how that works. Okay, I hear the rustling, and it's Friday, and you guys survived a song and everything, so I think you should go home. Uh, actually, Lonnie, if you would, 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 would bring it, I'm just always afraid I'll lose it because I, I carry other stuff back and so forth. But if I'm not there, leave it with the secretary in the main office and okay, she'll give it. I'll probably see that now. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. So, regarding one thing, uh -huh. is that, did you just say that with one the secretary? Yeah, leave it. Don't leave the exam with me here because I'm afraid I'll lose it. I, I carry too many things back. So, leave it either bring it by my office or if I'm not there, you can leave it with the secretary in the main office where you got the exam. And so, I will see my, my letter and my exam. Yeah, staple them together so that I, I can, you know, then I'll, then I'll get them. Okay? Hi. No. So um, helicase it does the unwinding, not, not topoisomerase. Topoisomerase deals with knots. Um, you don't use those to pull apart the histones. So there's, that's a much more complicated process. We probably won't talk about it here, but there's um, eukaryotic cells have complexes called remodeling engines that are involved in clearing out regions so the histones can be removed. And that's that's how that's done. Okay. Hi. Do you know why um, only T is replaced in um, RNA from DNA? Why it's replaced with U as opposed to no other one being replaced? And well, it turns out the T uh, the, the T is much more chemically stable than U is. Okay. So if you deaminate um, you, you make a C. Right. And over time, that doesn't lend to stability. It means that you're going to lose um, stability in your genome. So probably the reason why we have T's is it's much more chemically stable. So you're saying that T is like evolved from like the U as, as probably to the other That's, way around. The thinking is that the original nucleic acids were RNA in nature, and for stability, probably it evolved to okay. use T. That makes a lot more sense. Um, so I haven't picked up my exam yet. Did you send out like an email to everybody? Yeah, so it's, okay. it's, uh, you can pick it up. The, the office will be closed right now, okay. um, but it's, you can pick it up in ALS 2011. Okay, will that be open during the weekend, do you think? Or? Uh, no, so wait but, but Monday. Monday. Okay. Right. Thanks. Hi. So I want to still have some time after class. I asked if you had time after class. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll take a couple minutes. If, yeah, I said earlier I wouldn't, but well, I... Well, one, one question is I can get right from the key. Okay. So I'm going to have to figure out what I did wrong there. But the other one, I'm kind of confused, and you must have wanted something very specific.